Today we want to take a look at the interface of XFROG 3.5. XFROG has been around for a while, but the interface is actually pretty much um, up to date. Um, still there are some points that uh, many users don't know and uh, I want to try uh, to show you some hints and tricks um, that probably um, you've forgotten or, uh, well, simply missed in the manual. Most of you know that uh, you can hide and show parts of the interface simply with help of the window menu. But something that most people don't know is that you can double click in this bar, for example of the model view, and then take it out and move it on the screen where you want uh, or where you need it. You can minimize and if you close this window it will be put back into the um, complete interface. This you can do with uh, every um, well part of the interface. Actually if you uh, ho hover long enough um, over the uh, title bar you'll see the hint double click to pull window in out. So that works pretty fine if you need more space for um, um, the model view for example or for the parameter editor. Now take a look at the library window and the hierarchy window. Um, usually most people uh, drag and drop um, to add objects uh, to the scene and to create their hierarchies. But it's also possible to use a different way. For example if um, the parent object, uh, the root camera in this case is active, you simply can double click to add objects to the scene. And so with uh, just three double clicks you can create a basic structure. Another way uh, to add objects is uh, to right click into the interface, simply right click and choose new component and then the component uh, you need in the hierarchy. The right click menu also offers um, other um, well possibilities like changing the primitive type of a component which works usually faster um, compared to the well regular way which would be go to the primitive tab and then change the primitive type. It's also possible to right click and uh, um, uh, change the link type, delete or group or hide components. And here you also can see shortcuts So XROG offers several uh, different ways and approaches to create the um, structures and hierarchies in the hierarchy window. And now I want to show you um, another, uh, probably we use the horn component for that, um, another nice um, feature of the XFROG interface. By default um, most parameters have a spe specific range which also is useful for many cases. For example right here we're working on the rotation of the horn component. But let's say um, this rotation that we have set right here with help of the interface um, is not enough. I want to have a much stronger rotation. So it's possible to override those um, ranges or limits defined by the interface simply by entering uh, manual values. I'll use a higher segment count so that we get a smoother result. So I can use higher values right here. But this also can lead into problems. Um, for example when exporting objects most parameters are clipped uh, to the limits that are defined by the interface. So what we, can we do if uh, we exactly need this shape, born to export, but um, this parameter is clipped um, during export? Simply work on the ranges. So double click, 
change the range to 3 for example uh, to 5 and now we have uh, uh, the possibility to use higher values with the slider and so we can ensure that this um, object is really exported uh, the right way. This can be done with all uh, limits that you can see inside the interface and actually again um, if ho hovering long enough over such fields you usually get um, tooltips. And now I want to show you another way to change primitives um, of components. Let's say we have a horn component right here. A simple horn component just with a little bit rotation. Usually uh, when changing the primitive type we would right click and uh, choose primitive component or we would go to the primitive tab and change the primitive type. But there is another way. Um, with the horn component active go to the primitive tab in the libraries and now you simply can double click on the needed or on the desired primitive. So this way you can easily and very fast change um, the primitive types without having to go to the primitive tab or um, to right click. Just double click and here we go. And last but not least I want to um, well tell you something about uh, the different link types. Uh, here we can see a very simple hierarchy, a tree component, another tree component um, which I gave a green color. Those are connected uh, with this link which is set to multiple so the child object is multiplied along the curve. Now let's say um, you want to have this branch also on the other uh, tree component, you could select it, choose copy and drag it over there. So now we have a copy. Uh, the second tree has uh, different settings for distribution and node angle so that you can see it's uh, well a different hierarchy. Yeah, but um, let's say uh, those branches should be the same and after a while you decide that you're not happy with the shape. Um, well would adjust one of those parameters, let's say gravitropism, and then of course you have to do it on the other branch component too, which means uh, twice the work of course. But there's a different way. Instead of uh, copying, you can create an instance. Shift click and drag uh, to the other um, part in the hierarchy and you have an instance. You can see it uh, when you click on the branch component. Not the, only the one you click is highlighted but also the instance is highlighted. And if you now change the parameters they will be changed on both um, objects. So this is also a big time saver. So I think that's enough for today. Um, next time we will take a look at some mysteries um, which can occur, especially if you're new to XFROG 3.5, like um, vanishing uh, tree components and stuff like that. Thanks for watching.